afternoon and thank you all for coming. It's my joy to start this, this afternoon session with the invited speaker, Professor Emmanuel Trella. Emmanuel is a full professor at Sorbonne University in Paris 6 and is associated with the Laboratoire Jacques de Millions, a director of the Fondation Science Mathematique de Paris. And today he's here talking about the optimal shape and location of sensors or actuators in PDE models. So, Emmanuel. Thank you very much for, for this introduction. Uh, in this talk, I'm going to report on a series of works that I have done with uh, Yannick Privat and Enrique Zoisois, with whom we worked on the problem of uh, optimizing the, the shape and the location of sensors or actuators uh, for, systems for, which, uh, for systems that are driven by linear partial differential equations. Uh, such Problems are frequently encountered in many applications where, for instance, one would like to optimally design some sensors in order to reconstruct, at best, uh, the whole solutions of the system from only from partial measurements, or if you are acting on some control uh, on some system, um, optimally design some actuators in order then to be able to act on it with minimal efforts. So there are many, many applications behind. Uh, and as I said, uh, the systems uh, on which we are going to work are linear PDEs, and mainly in this work we are going to consider on the one part wave or Schrodinger equations, and on the other part, uh, gener general parabolic linear equations that can be, for instance, of heat, uh, the heat equation or Stokes equations or whatsoever. And for instance, uh, in this talk, so we are going to first to model the question of optimal design of, of sensors, and we are going, for instance, to address the following question. Uh, imagine that you have a, a domain, let's say a, a square or a room, uh, in which you would like to optimally design some thermometer, uh, which is of a given volume. So what is the optimal shape and placement of a thermometer? This is the kind of question that we are going to model and then to solve. So the first part of my talk will be on the model itself, because actually uh, modeling this problem is already a challenge. So we are go first going to discuss about that. And in order to lead this discussion, in the slides that follow, I will first focus on the wave equation. It is just for convenience. So, in what follows, let us consider a domain, capital omega in Rn. Uh, let us consider the wave equation inside with, let's say, Dirichlet boundary condition. And let us assume that we observe the solutions of the wave equation on a given subset, small omega, on, of capital omega. Okay? So, it is well known and it is a reminder that uh, we say that the wave equation is observable within a time of observation, let's say capital T, whenever there exists a positive constant, which is then uh, called the observability constant CT of omega, such that for any solution of the wave equation, you have this inequality, which is uniform with respect to the, to the wave solutions, and this inequality says that the energy of the localized observation, which is that, that one, so this is the integral over the horizon of time zero capital T, capital T is the time of observation, uh, the uh, integral over the subset small omega of observation, of the square of the wave solution, should be greater than or equal to the norm of the wave solution, uh, the, the norm of the initial solution, uh, with a constant here, and the largest possible constant appearing in this functional inequality is then called the observability constant. So we say that the system is observable whenever indeed this constant, this functional constant, is positive. Otherwise, uh, the constant is just equal to zero. For instance, uh, well, no, sorry. Let me first recall uh, an almost characterization, which is well known, of observability that was stated by Bardot, Slobo, and Rauch in 92. It's almost a necessary and condition for observability to hold for the peer uh, small omega capital T. And this almost necessary and sufficient condition is the well-known geometric control condition, or GCC in short, 
which stipulates that if you consider capital omega like a billiard, like in the talk of Nalini and Antaraman this morning, and if you consider rays propagating in capital omega inside, according to the laws of classical optics, that means the rays reflect uh, at the boundary according to the laws of classical optics, then every such ray propagating in capital omega should meet uh, the subset small omega within time capital T. This is the contents of the GCC, and it is almost equivalent for observability to hold. For instance, here uh, on this right figure, uh, indeed, observability does not hold, and this is reflected by the fact that there are many trapped rays that are rays bouncing uh, down and at the top uh, in infinite time without never meeting the observation subset small omega. Um, so the question that we want to model is uh, the following question. You have the choice of uh, designing uh, the, observation, uh, the observation subset omega, and you would like to design it so that then your observations will be the most efficient possible. So the question, for, for the moment it is an informal question, what is the best possible subdomain? So a very first obvious remark, we have to limit the size, uh, the measure of omega. Otherwise, the best possible subset, small omega of observation, is capital omega itself. It does not make sense, of course, because it would mean that given a system, you are putting sensors everywhere. <laughs> okay, but it is stupid because sensors are, co are costly. Hmm? And you would like to optimally design only a certain amount of sensors so that then from these partial measurements that you do, you will be able to reconstruct the whole solution at best. So first, uh, mathematical limitation. In what follows, we are going to search the best possible subset small omega over the set of all possible subsets small omega of capital omega that are of given Lebesgue measure, let's say capital L times the Lebesgue measure, uh, the total Lebesgue measure of, uh, of uh, capital omega for some capital L, which is, let's say, a fixed real number which is between 0 and 1 and which is fixed throughout my talk. Let me also stress that uh, in this work, we want to optimize not only the placement of small omega, but also its shape. It's very different because uh, imagine, and this is often the case in, in practice, imagine that your sensors uh, have already a prescribed shape. For instance, you have two disks. And imagine that you would like to place two disks optimally uh, in the set capital omega. So in that case, you can see very uh, uh, easily that this is, uh, let's say, standard finite dimensional optimization problem. But this is not, it is not obvious, okay, but it is not the optimization problem that we would like to address because here we want also to act possibly on the shape of small omega. So not only we want to place optimally sensors, but also shape them optimally. Moreover, uh, we are mathematicians, so we address a mathematical question. We do not want to prescribe uh, uh, an a priori shape uh, of omega. We do not want to put any restriction on the shape. Maybe it is not reasonable, but this is the mathematical question that we would like to address, meaning that we are going to search omega, small omega, over the set of all possible measurable subsets of capital omega. Maybe they will not be BV or whatsoever. We want to know if there is, you know, it's like Tina Turner. We want to know if there is a very best uh, observation subset. Okay. This is the mathematical question. Well, so in order to model this problem, since we have in mind uh, the observability inequality, which is still written here, of course, uh, this constant that is appearing here at the left-hand side, which is the observability constant, defined as an infimum over all possible wave solutions. This constant is a functional constant, which actually exactly measures the quality of an inverse problem, which is the problem of the following problem. You observe waves 
uh, on an interval of time zero capital T over the observation subset small omega. If, and from these partial observations, you would like to reconstruct uh, the initial conditions and so the whole solution. And this is an inverse problem, and this observability constant appearing here reflects exactly the quality of this inverse problem. It gives a measure for uh, the well-posedness of this inverse problem. And therefore, a priori, it, it seems natural to model the problem that we are investigating here as the problem of trying to maximize this observability constant over all possible subsets, small omega, of capital omega that have a fixed Lebesgue measure. It seems a priori natural, but, because you can see a but here. But actually, first thing, first remark, this problem is very difficult. Why? Why? Because the, the observability constant is defined here as an infimum over all possible waves. And when you try to maximize such an infimum, you encounter very serious difficulties. Uh, let, me, let me just explain in two words. Since we are making a spectral analysis in this work, uh, let me expand uh, the wave solution, y of t and x, as a Fourier series, as a spectral series. Uh, uh, I mean a series in the eigenfunctions of the Laplacian. Then, uh, when you expand the square of this infinite sum, you encounter many crossed terms. Uh, many cross terms that make the analysis actually very, very difficult. Actually, you encounter here the same kind of difficulty that you encounter in the well-known open problem of optimizing the constant in the in-gam inequalities. It is well known in a harmonic and non-harmonic non analysis. So, and there is also a second reason why maybe it is not so good of considering this problem, and this reason is more serious, at least from the from the modeling point of view, um, the observability constant appearing in this inequality is a deterministic one, of course. It's a functional constant, it is deterministic, and actually, this, since it is an infimum, this constant provides an account for the worst possible case, uh, since it is an infimum. Well, okay, this is okay, but uh, let us adopt the practical point of view. Imagine that you have optimally designed some subset, small omega. Then you place sensors according to this computation on the system. What are, what are you going to do then? Certainly you are not going to make only one measurement, but you are going to make hundreds, thousands of, of measurements. You are going to make a large number of measurements. And what you would like to ensure is that through this large number of measurements, things are going as efficiently as possible. So this is the notion of efficiency in average. And uh, this averaged efficiency is not reflected by this problem, because here, uh, this constant, which is deterministic, is very pessimistic. It only account accounts for the worst possible case. So this discussion led us to define, actually, a slightly modified version of the, of the observability inequality, uh, this leads us to define an averaged, a randomized observability inequality. Just instead of uh, defining a constant over all possible wave solutions, we are going to define a new constant, which is an infimum over random wave solutions. And the way we, we chose to, to do this randomization is inspired uh, by works uh, by uh, Nikola Burke and Nikolai Tsvetkov, who, who followed, actually, Zygmunt in the, in the 30s, and uh, who randomized uh, a solution of the wave equation as follows. Let us consider a solution of the wave equation, so without these random, random terms. So this is a Fourier series. Huh? This is a spectral expansion. Phi j here is a Hilbert basis of Aiken functions. So you have Fourier coefficients here, a j and b j. And in order to randomize this series, you just multiply each of the Fourier coefficients here, for instance, by plus or minus one, with random laws. So with probability one half, you choose to multiply by plus or minus one, Bernoulli law, for instance. You could do whatever else. It, it is not important. But, uh, and randomizing solution of, uh, of wave 
of the wave equation like, la like that, now we define a new observability inequality that we call randomized observability inequality just by adding an expectation term here uh, against the integral, and the expectation is running over all possible events. So you obtain a new observability inequality, which is different uh, from the deterministic one, and in turn, you obtain a new, observa a new randomized observability constant defined uh, as the largest possible constant so that this observability inequality holds true. What is quite easy to show is that this randomized observability constant has, let us say, a nicer expression uh, with respect to the previous one. The randomized observability constant is the infimum over all possible modes in the spectral expansion of some weight, gamma j of t, times uh, the integral over the observation subset small omega of the square of phi j, which is the jth eigenfunction. And uh, the weight, uh, gamma j of t, depend on uh, the PDE under consideration. For instance, for wave and Schrodinger equations, the sequence of weights is constant. And for parabolic equations, uh, the weights gamma j are exponentially increasing with respect to the eigenvalues. Okay. And uh, of course, by definition, the randomized observability constant is less pessimistic, is greater than or equal to the, the deterministic observability constant. And uh, you can believe me because maybe it is not so easy to see at this step. In general, this inequality here is strict. This is actually a consequence of uh, quantum chaos, but I will come to that point later. Okay, so as a conclusion of this preliminary discussion, uh, we choose, finally, more relevant to model the problem of best possible observation as the problem of maximizing over all possible subsets, small omega of a given Lebesgue measure, this randomized observability constant, which is this infimum over all possible modes of some weight time, times this localized integral of the square of the jth eigenfunction. Problem that we hope to be more tractable uh, uh, with uh, respect to the previous one. Okay. Um, before solving this problem, let me add uh, two or three remarks. So, on, on this problem that we have chosen to, to address, uh, finally, we, the randomized observability con constant is defined as an infimum over, let's say, random initial data, random waves. Well, we could also investigate the mathematical problem of maximizing uh, the right-hand side of the observability inequality just for one fixed initial datum. Of course, in practice, it does not make sense because <laughs> In practice, you do not know the initial datum that you would like to reconstruct, so you cannot optimally design a subset with respect to something that you do not know. Anyway, anyway, this problem is mathematically interesting, maybe. And uh, what can be seen very easily is that if we maximize this quantity, then there always exists uh, a best optimal observation subset of a given Lebesgue measure. It is not difficult to prove. And moreover, the regularity of this optimal observation subset can be whatever, actually. Uh, it is in, this is the interesting remark, probably. Uh, the, the best observation subset can be maybe a Cantor set, a fractal set uh, of uh, positive measure. And by the way, this raises the question of knowing in what follows whether the best observation subset that we are going to find may be fractal or not. Uh, it is a question. Okay. Uh, second remark, uh, I insisted already on the fact that we search the best possible observation domain small omega over all measurable subsets of capital omega. We do not want to make any uh, a priori restriction. But if we do, however, if we would restrict the search, uh, for instance, to such compact sets, for instance, 
we could uh, search the best optimal, uh, the best uh, observation subset over all possible subsets of a given Lebesgue measure that have uh, a bounded, or uniformly bounded by some capital A, uh, bounded variation. Why not? In that case, indeed, there always exists, oops, there always exists at least an optimal uh, subset, huh? because you have chosen some compact restrictions. But, as we will see in what follows, what is not clear uh, at this step maybe, is that if, if now you increase capital A, probably you may expect that the complexity of this uh, uh, best subset small omega will increase. And so it is not the very best in the sense of Tina Turner uh, subset. Uh, so. Okay. Uh, finally, uh, a, third, uh, a third remark. Uh, throughout my talk, I chose to focus on the optimal observation uh, problem, problem. But, as I said at the very beginning, there are uh, naturally related problems that can be solved in, the, in a similar ways. For instance, what is the best possible control domain when you want to control, let's say, the wave equation, or what is the best possible stabilizing uh, domain when you add some localized damping in the wave equation. Uh, for instance, here, the best possible stabiliz stabilization domain is the domain that will maximize the decay rate, the exponential decay rate uh, in the wave solutions. And by the way, uh, I mentioned this problem because it was investigated some 15 years ago in 1D by Ebrard and Enroux, and more or less the work by Ebrard and Enroux was the starting point of our own analysis. And actually, except, except this work, uh, there was no work before addressing this kind of problem that we are focusing here. Um, However, uh, of course, there are many, many contributions in the engineering community, but most of the time, people either uh, perform numerical uh, implementations or restrict also themselves to compact sets of subsets. And this is not what we want to do uh, again. Okay. So now, second part of my talk, let us solve uh, the problem that we have modeled in the first part, which is that one. And to solve the problem, mainly we are going to distinguish between two worlds, uh, the parabolic world, uh, on the left-hand side here, like heat or Stokes equation, and uh, wave or Schrodinger equations. Well, several preliminary remarks. Uh, you have here a problem of maximizing some infimum. Okay. Since the infimum here is running over all possible modes, certainly uh, we can expect that um, the Eigen functions with large uh, indices J will play a crucial role. So we can expect that we, we will have to, to get some knowledge on the asymptotics uh, of the Pj square. This is almost for sure. Mm. Uh, another remark is that certainly also the, the weights which are against the integrals here also play a role because they are very, very different depending on when you consider parabolic equations. In that case, you have exponentially growing uh, weights gamma j or wave of Schrodinger equations for which the gamma j are just equal to one. Okay. So, first, first result on parabolic, on the parabolic case. In that case, I very like this result because, <laughs> in some sense, it is the nicest possible result that you can state. We are happy with that. Because, just under very slight assumptions, there exists a unique optimal observation domain, omega star. So, <laughs> we are happy. And moreover, uh, moreover this uh, best possible domain, omega star, is even very regular because it is semi-analytic. Uh, which uh, implies, in particular, that it has only a finite number of connected components. It is not fractal. Okay, good. And we will even see in a few slides that we even have a, a nice algorithmic construction of this best subset. But I, I will give it in a few slides. This uh, result made uh, Giuseppe Butazzo say 
This is in contrast with uh, what will come later. Here, shape optimization wins. Uh, I will explain later why. Well, uh, so this result is short uh, to, to, to state, but however, quite long to prove, quite long and technical. And what was particularly uh, instrumental in our analysis was this very beautiful result, recent result by Aprez, Escoriaza, Wang, and Zhang, um, stating inequalities on the squares of the Phi J over any measurable subset small omega, uh, which is that inequality, uh, that inequality with constant here appearing in this, this inequality that are uniform with respect to any measurable subsets of uh, fixed Lebesgue measure. It was very crucial in our analysis. Okay, in, uh, there is much contrast between uh, the parabolic case and the case that I, I am going to focus now of wave and Schrodinger equations. For such equations, the situation is unfortunately not so nice. And actually, what we are able to prove is that under some spectral assumptions that I'm going to comment next, we are going at least to compute the optimal value of that problem. The optimal value is just equal to capital L. Okay. Okay. And by the way, to, to prove this result, it's a proof um, that it's a proof that cannot rely, by the way, on gamma convergence properties, because the functionals that we are considering here uh, do not satisfy the basic requirements of gamma convergence theory. For instance, they are not lower semi-continuous. Uh, well, okay. So it's a specific kind of proof using kinds of uh, homogenization arguments. And this is why, in contrast with the previous result, Giuseppe Butazzo said here, shape optimization fails, but homogenization wins. Okay. And uh, the main spectral assumption that we use uh, in order to prove that result is unfortunately very strong and not very reasonable. Let me comment about that because this is the link uh, with uh, uh, the talk by Nalini this morning. The main spectral assumption that we use is that one. You consider these probability measures here, the phi j squared dx. Since phi j is a Hilbert basis of eigenfunctions, the phi j squared dx are probability measures. So, and as you know, probability measures are compact, weakly compact, so they may converge to something, to some weak limits, that are called in quantum chaos theory, quantum limits. Okay. And uh, the assumption that we do here is that actually the whole sequence of this probability measure does converge to the uniform measure. So you have a, a best possible delocalization of eigenfunctions, as said Nalini this morning. And this assumption is called QUE, she said that this morning, quantum unique ergodicity assumption. Well, so when, it is, when, uh, when is it true? <laughs> so it's true in 1D, and this is for sure, because in 1D, the eigenfunctions are just sine function, and the sine square of Jx converges to some constant when J converges to the infinity, and there is no other limit, as you know. Well, but unfortunately, this is the only case that we know where QUE is valid. <laughs> so, <laughs> as soon as we are in a multi-D, it becomes a nightmare. It becomes a nightmare, and this is, we are entering here in this very fascinating part of mathematics, which, which is the quantum chaos theory, with uh, this, uh, this very widely op op opened question, which is of trying to, to, address, to, to, to guess what are all possible limits of this sequence of probability measures, the phi j squared dx, uh, which are called quantum limits. Well, and Nalini recalled this morning Schneerelman theorem, even, even its proof. Schneerelman theorem is certainly the best known theorem uh, in this, in this, uh, in this uh, theory. It says that uh, if the geodesic flow uh, pr propagating inside the domain is ergodic, ergodic actually in the sense of the Liouville measure, but uh, well, we don't care much about that, then we have uh, quantum ergodicity, QE, meaning that 
um, almost every sequence of the phi j squared dx indeed does converge to the uniform measure. Almost every sequence in the sense of density one, to be, to be precise. But unfortunately, this result, which is very strong, lets some room for exceptional subsequences to exist. Exceptional means here density zero. You may have uh, exceptional subsequences of these probability measures converging, for instance, typically to, to the Dirac along a closed geodesic. And uh, these are referred to in quantum physics as being scars. These are scars in the domain. Well, okay. And uh, unfortunately, in this result, we use the QUE assumption that would stipulate that not only almost every subsequence converges to the uniform measure, but the whole sequence converges to the, to the uniform measure. And until now, there is no result, no result uh, in this context in multi-D, uh, giving some examples where we have QUE. <laughs> so it's like that. Anyway, uh, this strong assumption that we do, QUE, is not necessary because uh, for particular configurations, such as in the disk, we are actually also able to state this inequality here. This inequality is still true. So showing that our very strong spectral assum assumption is not sharp. And in the disk, our result is based on the knowledge of all possible quantum limits in the disk. At least one of them is very well known. One of these quantum limits in the disk is the Dirac along the boundary, which is well known because it reflects uh, the well, also well-known phenomenon of the whispering galleries. Okay. Now what about the fact that the supremum be reached or not? Well, Unfortunately, here too, the problem is open in general. We, are, we think that for generic values of capital L and for generic domains, the supremum is not reached. And by the way, I will show you in a few minutes on numerical simulations that numerical simulations argue in favor of this conjecture. Quite surprisingly, for certain values of capital L, which are very exceptional values of capital L, the supremum is reached. And this is a kind of uh, arithmetic resonance phenomenon that I, I will not comment here. Okay. So now this leads us to the question of trying, because we do not know if the supremum is reached or not. So let us try to construct, anyway, maximizing sequences. So following, by the way, uh, always Ebrard and Enroux, who also did that several years ago in, in 1D, let us uh, consider this truncated problem. I say truncated because here now, instead of taking the infimum over all possible modes, we only consider the infimum over the capital N first modes. So we fix an integer capital N. We consider the infimum over these first capital N modes. Uh, for this problem now, there is absolutely no problem to prove to establish that it has a unique optimal domain, let us denote it by omega n. Moreover, omega n is very regular, it is semi-analytic. This is okay, this is good. But now let us see how omega n evolves as a function of n, of capital N. And here is the bad surprise, of course. Well, uh, for Wave and Schrodinger equations, we will see here on numerical simulations that the complexity of the optimal set omega n is badly increasing with capital N. You can see here on the numerical simulations in a square, we took capital L equals 0.2, and here are uh, respective optimal domains when capital N is growing. You can see that, um, you can see a very much increasing number of connected components, although it is not, not at all fractal, uh, not at all. It is not converging to some fractal set, by the way. Uh, and what, what we can even prove is, in some sense, the worst possible phenomenon, which is uh, known in, in, the, in the engineering community as spillover. 
uh, it states that the best domain omega n when you consider the problem with n modes is actually the worst possible one when you go with n plus one modes. So there is a very strong intrinsic instability in the problem. Well, it's like that. Here are uh, numerical simulations in the disk with, by the way, an accumulation at the boundary, which is uh, expected in view of uh, the Dirac along the boundary. In strong contrast, for parabolic equations, you, you, you see, you go from the nightmare to some very nice dream in some sense. Uh, it's, uh, well. uh, in the parabolic world, uh, you have a very good result because the sequence of optimal sets, omega n, is stationary, meaning that as soon as capital N is large enough, omega n does not move anymore. Omega n is fixed, it's stationary. And so omega n, from some given integer, is even equal to the very best subset, omega star, whose existence and uniqueness was stated a bit before. This is why, in turn, uh, omega star is uh, semi-analytic. And so, so I promised you the, the optimal thermometer, so here it is. Uh, we take capital omega, uh, the square, we consider the wave solution, the heat solution inside with Dirichlet boundary conditions, and you can see that now you make evolve capital N, you increase capital N, and quite quickly, Omega n is stationary and is equal to the best uh, domain, omega star, which is therefore the optimal thermometer in the square. So it is not so, it is not a very usual thermometer, huh? but it is the optimal shape and placement of a thermometer in the square for capital L equal to 0.2. Well, so I am now with my uh, conclusion. Uh, I said at the beginning that I would focus only on the observation uh, problem, but as I said also, we have some similar results uh, for optimal control domains or stabilization domains. Uh, I also focused th uh, throughout my talk on internal observability, meaning that uh, omega, the, the small omega, is an internal domain, is inside capital omega. But, for instance, in view of medical applications, uh, it is very nice to consider the case of boundary observability. And so maybe you would like to optimally design sensors at the boundary of, of the domain. So in that case, it can be done too. Uh, we can do a similar study just by considering this expression for the, for the randomized observability constant. Uh, well, you see the difference here in this integral, which is now an integral at the boundary of the domain. Um, certainly, our contribution that I would like to underline is to have uh, discovered, let's say, intimate relations between this shape optimization problem and the theory of quantum chaos, more precisely, of quantum ergodicity properties, of asymptotic properties of the Eigen function. And uh, to definitely conclude, also, we focused on the randomized observability constant because of my preliminary discussion that I hope was convincing. Well, but anyway, mathematically, and even practically, actually, it could also be uh, very interesting to try to optimize the classical, the deterministic uh, observability constant, which is, as I said previously, by comparison with in-gam inequalities, certainly a very intricate problem. Anyway, anyway, so we have done a, a small progress recently with uh, Emmanuel Lambert and Yannick Priva by proving this uh, probably unexpected formula, which says that asymptotically in time, the classical deterministic observability constant can be written as the minimum of two quantities one of which is of a spectral nature, it is just the randomized observability constant, and the other one is of a geometric nature, because you can see that uh, it is asymptotically in time an infimum over all possible rays propagating in capital omega of the averaged time spent by each ray in omega bar. So it is a... Uh, it is a geometric uh, quantity that, uh, that certainly would be 
quite interesting to try to optimize what we have not done uh, until now. And so I, can, I think I can stop now. Thank you. Thank you, Emmanuel, for this, for this very nice talk. Are there questions or, or comments? The, the last um, formula you have up right there, you know, that has this kind of duality between um, rays, and, rays and spectrum. Are there other examples of something similar to that? Oh, I, I, didn't, I did not understand your question, sorry. Uh, I wonder if this, this uh, characterization as, a, as the minimum, minimum of, oh. of a spectral quantity this and, one? A, and a geometric quantity, if, that's, if that uh, occurs in other similar problems. Ah, you mean other equations than the wave equation? No? Or, or other problems besides shape optimization? Or ah, no, I, I, I really do not know. It is too much recent. No, no, I do not know. I do not have any step back on this problem for the moment. Mm. I, I guess I, I do have a question. Mm -hmm. The question is maybe very silly. The thing is, instead of randomizing the, the, the series with the coefficients, mm -hmm. is there any way you could... You could randomize the equation by adding some stochastic perturbation to the wave equation then mm. hoping for the best is there any yeah yeah why not why not our our choice was guided by the fact to get then a, a more a more tractable constant a more tractable functional uh, uh, a more, a more a more amenable uh, to analysis functional this was our aim and so why not try to randomize the, the equation itself? Yes, but uh, what is the constant? What is the, the expression of the functional constant that, that you will get in turn? This is not clear to me. Yeah. Here, here, by this randomization procedure, uh, as you could see, we got an immediate link with quantum chaos. Uh, and it was also the, the point of interest. Mm. No more questions? So this is the case, we thank again Professor Romano.